He's down. Chris Van Hollen. Senator Van Hollen. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, Ambassador Verma. It's great, great to see you. Uh, great to have a fellow Marylander, at least now here. Uh, thanks for your service on the Hill and your previous service um, as Ambassador to India, among other posts. Uh, and I do want to second what uh, Senator Shaheen and maybe others have said about the importance of us confirming an ambassador um, right away uh, to represent the United States um, in New Delhi, as you did uh, so ably. Um, I want to raise a couple uh, issues uh, with you um, in my time. One has to do with the passage of the Foreign Service Families Act. Uh, so I co-chair, along with Senator Sullivan, the, the bipartisan Foreign Service Caucus, and we're very focused on trying to make sure um, we have strong morale um, in the Foreign Service and the State Department overall. Uh, we passed uh, something called the Foreign Service Families Act as part of the last State Department authorization bill that was included in the NDAA, uh, and look forward to working with you and your team to implement it. Um, my, my staff has uh, asked for a, a report on the implementation, um, and so I just look forward to working with your team on that process. The idea is to extend some of the same benefits uh, to foreign service families that military families enjoy. Um, that's one aspect of it. So I just look for your commitment to make sure that we fully implement that act. 100%. Absolutely. Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, let, me, let me turn now to consular services. Look, we went through a COVID pandemic. Um, understand that there were delays on both issuing U.S. citizens' passports and also uh, issuing um, foreigners, including a lot of family members with loved ones who are U.S. citizens, um, understand the delays. But the delays have been continuing. And this is, this is no hit on the people who are working every day very hard to try to process the passports and non-immigrant and immigrant visas. They're just under-resourced. And it, it really ends up, I think, hurting the United States um, when you know, people are able to uh, travel to other countries. Uh, they want to come to the United States, uh, but they're able to come to other countries but just can't get a non-immigrant visa. And then, of course, there are people who would like to come, for example, from India uh, to uh, see their relatives. In, in Maryland um, for a wedding or for a funeral. Do you have any idea what the current wait time is for a non-immigrant visa in New Delhi? It's, it's too long, Senator. It's 612 days. Right. right? So, I mean, you know, I, I don't know how many people plan weddings to, you know, two weeks ahead. Certainly people don't plan their funerals. It, it, is, it is just really, it is really hurting us, um, in my view. It's certainly hurting constituents uh, here um, in Maryland and around the country. And on U.S. passports, um, it's, the delay is now 12 to 18 weeks still. I mean, that is, it's unacceptably long. And again, the people doing this work, um, they're doing it well. They just need to be better resourced. So, do I have your commitment to work on this issue? Yes, but maybe I could just add a, a okay. couple observations here because I've stood in the visa line myself, you know, out in our consulates. I know how important this is uh, to folks. I will say our biggest challenge is not in every category. It's in the tourist visa, the first-time applicants uh, for tourist visas. And it is not globally. It is in a few select uh, countries. And in fact, um, we've exceeded our wait times and, and made good progress in the other categories. But you're right, in these high population countries with the surge in travel, India, Mexico, and some others, we have to get those numbers down. I think there, there is a plan to get those numbers down. I will also say on passport services, as I understand it, we're back to kind of the standard routine processing time of six to nine weeks. Uh, well, I, I know you're working to that. I have 12 to 18. Let's okay. compare notes afterwards. Right. But um, it has improved, obviously, since the pandemic period. But I, I do think we have a long way to go. Um, I do want to follow up with you after this on uh, two things. One are security clearances, where there have been significant improvements. I yeah. think 90% of State Department security clearances now come in below the, the government standard. There's still 10% that are agonizingly long and, again, hurt the State Department's ability to do its work, uh, mostly in other federal agencies. So I want to work with you on that. Great. Visa waiver program. Uh, the visa waiver program obviously provides uh, great convenience um, and is also designed to provide security with that convenience. Um, it's a good program where it works. 
But as you know, I think the, a key part of the visa waiver program includes reciprocity, equal treatment of American citizens of all faiths and backgrounds traveling overseas, right? You know, right? Absolutely. Um, we don't have any measure of that right now in our current visa waiver program. We have no uh, way to measure whether or not um, Americans of one faith or another, one ethnicity or another, are being treated differently than other Americans when they're traveling abroad under the visa waiver program. Will you work with me to make sure that we have a standard to measure that? Absolutely. I look forward to that, because blue is blue. Um, and we want to make sure all Americans are treated uh, equally when they're traveling under the visa waiver program anywhere. We want that, but the visa waiver program is something we set up. It's within our control. So I look forward to working with you on that. It's a great point. Thank you. Thank you.